Sega. When Sega acquired us, it was part of a movement to do more Western development, um, to expand development around licenses. The strategic acquisition of San Francisco-based developer Secret Level was a key step in Sega's goal of securing the Iron Man property. This acquisition also raised the stakes for the once independent developer. Iron Man means a lot to our company. It's a chance to really reach out and hit the mass market in a way that we don't often get the chance to do. It's a real testament to Sega's commitment to the project, to Marvel in general, that they're going and building up their internal studio around you know, the Iron Man franchise. The problem with a lot of licensed games is that they don't have enough time. So one of the ideas behind acquiring a studio like Secret Level was, hey, if we acquire Secret Level and we then go and sign a license with Marvel, we can go instantly to Secret Level and say, hey guys, we have this great license, start working right now. Once the license was secured, Secret Level had to begin designing a game based on a character with virtually unlimited abilities. This presented some development challenges. How are we gonna do this? This guy, he can, he can do everything. He can fly as fast as airplanes, he can hover, he can get on the ground and ground pound and shoot far away. He's got super strength, he's got you know, the armor shield, the unit beam, the repulsor blast, all these different things. You've gotta balance gameplay. So how do you make it so that all these, all these things that he can do are viable tactics and, and you don't say, you know, I can just get through the game by sitting back, or I can just get through the game by charging in. Iron Man is sort of a one-man army, and so he's going out there and he's fighting soldiers and huge battalions of enemies. So we wanted to get that war feeling. How do you make a threat that this guy can't overcome, but also how do you, how do you create the controls to, to make this guy work? The prototype literally took a week to throw together. I think created a really strong, first of all, it, it was kind of fun, okay? And that's, that's obviously a good sign. It's gonna be layered gameplay. When you get in close, you can take out a lot of guys quickly. When you're farther away, it's a little bit slower. You have energy usage, which restricts some things, but we always wanna make it so you can always fly. What we needed to do from very early on is get the flight down. And not flight in a drifting up in the air kind of way, but like pounding against the air at hundreds of miles per hour. And how do you keep up with that? And how do you draw terrain fast enough? We didn't want to have a game where you're just a character running through, you know, a street or whatever. It's, you can fly. When you've got a character that can fly anywhere at any time, you've got to have an area that's ready for that. We want to have tracer bullets constantly zipping by, and we want to have a chaotic battlefield type feeling. We have to constantly keep the action, and we have to keep it around the player, but not so difficult that the player feels totally out of control. And so I think that's an area that we're really working on, you know, how many missiles can come at you at the same time, how many people can be firing at you. Constantly twisting that dial, getting it just enough, but not enough to be frustrating. Trying to find, you know, the perfect match of the flight, the melee, and the range combat, and all bringing that together and, and making it look beautiful and, and really, you know, feel like an extension of the film was all things we had to think about. When that started coming together, we said, you know, this is gonna be a really cool game on its own. It's a great license, everyone agreed with that but this is gonna be a really cool game.